Welcome to day one of Oliver's Sheets Week. In front of me I have a sample spreadsheet. You can find this exact copy if you click down the link below. It will ask you to make a copy and you want to do that so that you can manipulate this as we explore various things using this fake data. So day one is really designed to provide some foundational skills so teachers can improve their efficiency and productivity by increasing their knowledge and skills on leveraging Google spreadsheets. So the example data I have here might be something like a grade book um, or could be results on various assessments. So the first thing I want to show you is how to freeze columns because there is not a default header here. And so if you were to, let's say, sort by last name, it's going to recognize L as last name and put the L in alphabetical order, which you don't want to do. So how to freeze columns is you're going to go up here in the corner and notice when you get something draggable, it's going to turn into a hand. And if you just click hold and drag that line down to what you want to freeze. So now I can scroll up and that first row is frozen. Now as your spreadsheet grows larger and you get multiple data points, you may want to freeze columns as well. Same process. You're going to go up here turns into a hand. You're going to click and drag and then now your first and last name columns are frozen. So as you gather more data and you're entering over here, you still know what student it corresponds to. Next, I want to show you just some basic sorting. So here I may want to have my students sorted by grade level. So I can click on column C. You can click here your header or you can click here. Doesn't matter. You're going to go to data and sort. And you can do it in alphabetical order ascending or descending. Now my students are sorted by grade level. However, if you notice over here, I've got Mickey Mouse and then Donald Duck. And so that is not sorted by last name alphabetic order. So you could do the same thing over here. Go to data, sort column, but then you lost your grade level. So unlike Microsoft where you can set levels of sorting, if you do want your data sorted by last name, ABC order and then grade level, go ahead and do the last name first and then come back and sort by grade level. And now you have it so you got Jiminy Cricket, DeVille, Donald Duck, and Mickey Mouse for your third graders. So that is how you can sort your data. So now we're going to do some basic formulas. So let's say I wanted to find an average for the assignment. So let's see, assignment one. Formulas all start with an equal sign. So I can put my column down here, equals, and then type average. Notice it's already given me suggestion based on the data. Nine times out of 10, this is probably gonna be exactly what you want. So if I just click that, and so what it's doing is finding the average of cell D2 through D15. Click enter, and there is my average. Now instead of retyping that for every single assignment cell, you can also just drag that corner, copy that formula, and notice you have a different average in the cells. Now where this might be problematic though is your placement. Because what if I get a new student? Then 
this is constantly going to be moving down. So I actually may want this up at the top. So to do that, you can click at number two here. And I'm going to do a right click. I'm going to insert one above. And then you can actually just go ahead, highlight your formulas here, control or command X for cut, and then paste that up here. And now here's another chance where you'd practice freezing those formulas. Because now if I were to sort by grade, it's going to include this average. So I can just drag that down and now I have the average up here for the different assignments. Now if you wanted to find the average overall for each student, you could either add it right here, the formula, or what I think would make more sense is to come back over here to column D and insert one column to the left. So I got this menu by just doing a right click or two finger click on a Mac or a Chromebook and I can start my formula with average and it didn't give me suggestions that time so I can just go like this and you can even add empty cells if you know you're going to have additional assignments. And now that is my average. Christopher Robin on these three assignments has an average of 80. To copy this formula into the rest of the cells, see that little blue corner? Grab it and just drag it down. And now you've got the average for all of those. So I would go ahead and label this. Now the other thing you might be thinking is, you know, you don't want your average to all these decimal points. So you can change the way this appears, the formatting. So I'm going to select the whole column and instead of doing it like this, if you click the letter or the number, it's going to go ahead and select the entire column. This is useful because as you add more students, then the formatting will also be included. So if I go to format, number, I can go to number here and it's going to decrease the number of decimal points. You have a lot more options if you'd like. You can go to format number and you can even go to more formats and you could do a custom format and here's where you know, maybe I do not want any decimal points. So I could do that and you can scroll down. You can see a lot of different options here. So I'm going to choose the one, no decimal points, apply. And notice now I've eliminated my decimal points. You could do the same thing up here for your averages. Again, I'm going to click the number two that selects the entire row. And if I go to format number, and I don't want the two decimal points. I'm just going to go here and because I just used it. It's still here. If you don't see it, the number format here, you can go to more formats and choose custom norm number format to find it. And then it automatically changed it to that. And I may want to drag my frozen columns over here so then I can see what their average is as I complete. Next, this is all well and good, but as you add additional data, you may want to make it pop so that you can easily, easily visually see who needs intervention, who are you worried about, who needs to redo assignments. However you're using this data, so we're going to do some conditional formatting here. And so I'm going to select my data and go to format, conditional formatting. 
So here it is. This conditional format is going to apply to these ranges. You can always change this. So it's going from E3 cell to G16. Maybe I know that I'm going to have lots of data in here. So maybe I'm going to go to Z100. Okay, so right now it's looking at these cells. It's going to apply, if they're not empty, it's going to apply green. That's not helpful for me. So I'm going to change the rules and anything that is less than or equal to a 70, I am going to make red because those are my students that I want to provide intervention to. I'm going to add another rule. So again, same cells. This time, any students that's greater than or equal to let's say 90, I'm not too worried about those. So I'm going to apply those green. Another rule. Anything that is between 71 and 89, those are my border kids. I'm going to do, I don't like the orange, I'm going to choose yellow. Done. And when you have all those rules applied, you can click done. And now you've got something very easy to visually see of who you need to intervene with. So with these, assignment three, you can see it's just Christopher Robin and Mickey Mouse that I may want to pull and do some reteaching with. This is really useful to apply these conditional formatting for things like sight words or phonics instruction, those types of assessments that you may give multiple times um, and you're looking for mastery because it makes it really easy to know who exactly needs to work on what specific skill instead of going to your binder and looking at their paper. Um, so that is how you do conditional formatting. The only other thing I really wanted you to see today and go over is tabs. So you can see whenever you enter or create a new spreadsheet, it creates a tab called Sheet 1, which is not very descriptive. So if you want to rename this, you can click the down arrow and it shows this menu. So I'm going to rename this and call it Gradebook. If you're visual and you like color coordinating, you can also click that down arrow and you can change the color of it. So maybe I'm going to make that purple. Now, the beauty of tabs is you can have 200 of them in a single workbook. I don't necessarily recommend that. However, what I've seen educators do is they have separate files for different things. And many of those, if they're combined in one workbook, then you only have to open a one file and you can go to different tabs. So maybe this is grade book for semester one and you're ready to do semester two. Well, instead of recreating it or making a copy of this workbook, whole entire workbook, you can click the down arrow and you can duplicate it. So now I've got a copy of my grade book. So I can rename this and say semester two grade book. I can delete all of my data by just highlighting it. Delete. And you will get these error messages because you don't have any data in there yet. That doesn't worry me. 
But then as I enter assignments, notice all of your formulas up top, as well as your conditional formatting, are preserved. And then if you are having a conversation with a parent saying, hey, how's Christopher Robin doing? Well, in semester two, he's got a 75. And semester one, he had an 80. So he's slipping a little bit. So let's figure out why that is. So then maybe you also, since that's a first grade student, maybe you also have a phonics um, inventory that you might use. So instead of creating a separate spreadsheet for that, you can just add a sheet, rename it, call it phonics inventory. And I will teach you later in the week how you can import these names. Until then, you can just copy and paste. Okay, notice you will have to drop these down again and then you could create your phonics inventory. Um, and so remember, you can have 20 things up here and depending on what you need, because this semester one grade book, not important anymore, you can move it so it's towards the back because as you continue to add more tabs, you'll notice you won't necessarily see them all at one time. So those things that may no longer be relevant you can just go ahead and hide towards the back, but then if you need it, it's there. And now instead of opening up 10 files, different spreadsheets, you can have all of your data centralized in a single spreadsheet with organizing your different tabs. So hopefully that's helpful. And just your really basic overview at this point of working inside your spreadsheet. Look forward to day two.